Hello, and welcome to In the Court of the Winter Nave. We've got two, Project 4. You know, King Crimson. King Crimson is supposed to be frightening. It's frightening music. You know, famously in 1969 they scared all the hippies. Um, but it's more than that. You know, if you really engage with it emotionally, you know, Lock Tongues and Epic Part 2, it is a terrifying piece of music. You know, it's Armageddon, isn't it? It's, it's or worse than that. It's, it's worse. You know, and so something that really captures that is good King Crimson. And Project 4, you know, although I really like Mask, I think Mask is, is fantastic. There's something with Project 4, there's something there. The Crimson King, which is on Project 4, and it's not on Project 1, 2 and 3. It's sort of on Construction of Light Era as well, but particularly Project 4, I think. They found something. This, this was where they were going. And yet, ironically, it was actually the third project. And Project 3 started when uh, Tony Levin didn't turn up for Project 4, actually. So we've got Pat on V-Drums. And uh, Tony Levin is back. Yes, quite right. But yeah, so whatever Project 2 started and Project 1 kind of didn't, although maybe did, this is it. You know, uh, monstrous stuff. They might be the most scary albums in the catalogue, maybe. You know, that thing, that something. It's on Stars and Bible Black. It's on Ian McDonald's sax playing in 69. And it's injected with rocket fuel. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. Um, you know, after listening to th this album, I need to hide in a cupboard. I remember I went on holiday with my family. I was about 20 when this came out, or 21, I think. Yeah, I was 21. Um, so it was, it was actually last time, you know, sort of come home, uh, back, back to the family and, and uh, sort of going on holiday together for the last time, actually. And, and, and we, it was to Portugal, and, and I took with me CDs, actual CDs, in their dual cases. And I think what I took was bit Boggart and Apathy and the projects, <laughs> the four projects. So I was listening to a lot of this stuff. And I kind of felt a bit sick afterwards, I think, about listening to a lot of it because it's a bit much. But music should do that. Is it just entertainment, etc., etc.? The pinnacle of human achievement. What we're about. Why are we here? You know, I've, I've had these real conversations with people who, who insist that uh, music is just vacuous background entertainment. But it is there. There is something there, something else, that's important and, and uh, defines us, who we are, and means something. So yeah, drum and bass. <laughs> sort of. Or maybe it, it embraces an essence of what was good and exciting and creative about that, that era that wasn't particularly dance music. Which was actually kind of like what a lot of prog in the 70s, although it wasn't as diverse. Certainly you know what was happening in Germany in the 70s, there's massive parallels there. And of course, it isn't just that. This, this is you know layers of, of scary, beautiful harmonies going on over the top of this stuff. Uh, normally, when when I uh, do my reviews and when I listen to the albums and make the notes, I'll do a few albums at once. But more than one album, Project Four is is enough. I'm not going to sit and listen to two albums of Project Four. It's just too much. It's too. <laughs> it's just. Oh my god. Okay. And track one is Ghost, Part One, and in fact. Tracks one to four are Ghost Part One, but the Ghost Part One, Part One. This is the the prototype drum and bass crim. Uh, you know the mixture of live and sequence drums. That's pretty cool. Uh, there's some Fripp sustain, Levin bass. Uh, some of the most frightening landscapes with Levin evils going on, and that's that's the difference between Project Three. Is obviously Tony Levin's doing his evil stuff, and he really gets he really gets it there. Um, and there's there's ten minutes of this stuff. Ah! Track two, uh, now, evil bass stuff, further into the horror. And it goes down to something a bit lighter, but with this, this, this frightening sequence rhythm. None of the other projects get this intense, it's only here. Uh, track three, so this is Ghost Part One, Part Three. Uh, subdued evil sounds, and then sustains starts again. And then track four is sustains, absolutely awesome. Probably the best sustains. Maybe that's unfair on Project 2, I don't know. And the drums fit perfectly into that noisy, scary stuff. And that's Ghost Part 1. Track 5 is Deception of the Thrush. Of course, there's actually an asterisk next to Deception of the Thrush because uh, it's composed by Fripp, Fripp, Gun and Baloo. Whereas the other is it's composed by the four of them. And it's a good version. Uh, although, very short ending for this one. Um, it seems strange, really. You think about it, that Pat Masolato doesn't have a a writing credit on Deception of the Thrush, and he's so much part of it, although of course he didn't write the original version. What he did with it is is so important. That's how it goes, I suppose. 
Track six is Hindu Fizz, we know that one as well. It's the Indian percussion samples tabla. Obviously it's not a real tabla, it's a sample tabla. It doesn't really go anywhere, but there's some really cool leavening on there, and it is great. It is actually great. Track seven is proje projection. Brutal. Absolutely definitive. This is d definitive projection. So much better than Into the Frying Pan. Into the Frying Pan was, was so disappointing. And there's this extra little bit that went before the um, the ascending, descending notes finishes. It sort of breaks into this awesome levin thing, surprise bit. How do you make your crimsonising better? Well, you add more levin, obviously. Goes with that saying. Uh, track eight is Ghost Part Two, Part One. And sort of transmission noises, um, jazzy bass, audience laughter. Um, stuff is about to happen. We don't know what it is. Track nine is Ghost Part Two, Part Two. The drums come in. Uh, with the wire effects. I'm not entirely sure what Ghost is. Is Ghost just Project 4 really? I suppose so. Uh, track 10 is Ghost Part 2, Part 3. Some stuff. Actually a bit meh. A bit meh at that point. Track 11, uh, much more interesting. Evil living bass stuff, which is what we need. I think at 50 seconds there's a heckle from the audience. I can't quite hear what they're saying. If anyone knows what they're saying, let me know. Kind of gets more treble as it goes along. Uh, then track 12, Ghost Part 2, Part Five, four, yeah, five. Um, bass riff starts. Soundscapes come in. The crims return, and it goes almost silent. Then actually silent. Then there's a silly bit at the end, which is quite funny. Light construction at its silliest, so that's cool. And then it cuts out. <laughs> it just cuts out. That's the end of the, the end of the project box, actually. And there it is. Project Four West goes live. See you next week.